I've been a severe critic of Obama's socialism as anybody in the radio business. In fact, you could say that I predated many in the business in seeing what he was and what he was going to do. But frankly, the banks need to be regulated. And I know many of you can't understand nuance, but the fact of the matter is he, he's right in wanting to overhaul Wall Street, the biggest overhaul since the 1930s. You have to understand that many of you are just feeding back the lies and the pap that are being put out by J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, and other banks through some of the so-called conservative uh, loudmouths who don't really understand finance at all. I frankly do understand finance, and I am totally in favor of free markets, but there's no such thing as ultimate freedom in anything. In other words, total freedom is anarchy. Let me put it to you that way. Total freedom in any sector leads to anarchy. Take that, Mr. Obama, and run with it. I try to give McCain trickle up poverty. He didn't listen to me. Maybe you'll be smart enough to listen to me now that Massachusetts has come falling down. Yes, these crooks need to be regulated. Yes, they do. Now, why I am saying that is because I've actually studied the banking laws before the Great Depression, the banking laws after the Great Depression, the banking laws till Bill Clinton came to power and ripped them out and threw them away, the banking laws until Bush threw away what was left, and what happened since Clinton Bush and what we have to do now to fix it. And I say yes. I do not reject these proposals out of hand. I would like to see more details. And uh, uh, many of you say, well, Obama's just doing it because it's a populist message. No, I'm sorry. No, I believe that we have to go back to the 1929 stock market crash that ushered in the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall Act was a fabulous act, and it separated commercial and investment banking, which remained law until uh, the, uh, uh, the Southerner came to power, Bill Clinton, until the man from Hope came uh, to power, Hope again. Gee, two hopes in a row. The Glass-Steagall Act was put in, and it, it kept banks and investment banks separately, separate. And that was law until 1999 when Bill Clinton evaporated that protection, that wall. And what happened as a result is there were uh, mercilessly large, grotesque, obscene, pornographic profits and bonuses on Wall Street, and you paid for it. They were trading paper that had no substance whatsoever. They were creating fiduciary instruments that don't even exist. They made them up in order to trade them amongst themselves. And as I say to you, I believe that hedge funds need to be separated from banks in order to make riskier investments uh, separate from the banks. You know, that's how I see it. Uh, the fact of the matter is I'm not alone in this. <laughs> Some Republicans actually are taking a wait-and-see approach. Don't assume that all Republicans oppose regulating the banks to some extent and please don't argue with me that we don't need any regulation he's attacking capitalism you don't understand what i'm talking about here you got to understand there's more to this than meets the eye that's my opinion 1-800-449-8255 what's your opinion bob in new york wor go ahead explain to me why i'm wrong well, bob this is tom all right tell me why i'm wrong in saying that obama's right in wanting some regulation of banks, primarily separating hedge funds from banks. Michael, you're right. We do need regulation. The world needs to be rid of phony financial instruments such as credit mortgage obligations, credit default swaps. But any tax on the bank will be like cap and tax. It will be bank and tax. It will be passed on to the customers. And it's a it's an end around way of taxing us, Michael. We can't sustain. All right, I am against taxation of this kind because the government didn't earn the money; they're just trying to spend the money. Rather than taxing uh, uh, trades on Wall Street, what they ought to do is cut down on the federal bureaucracy. They ought to fire the thirty-eight thousand new workers that they just hired inside the agency that approves illegal aliens to come into America, for example. Do you know that the INS just brought in, and they don't call it that anymore, ICE, they call 30,000 new employees to process, for example, 200,000 illegal Haitians they're going to bring in. Where's that money supposed to come from? Our, our system is inundated, Michael. We can't sustain it. All right, so you agree that some regulation is, is necessary. Uh, uh, you know, I know that what he said hammered Wall Street stocks. I understand that because they're frightened that they're going to be reined in, you know, that the, that the party may be over to a certain extent. But look at Goldman Sachs. They were in the garbage. Then overnight after Thanksgiving, if you remember, under Bush, they re reorganized from being an investment bank into a bank. Remember that? So they can collect some of that TARP money? 
Yeah, tax the bonuses at Fannie Mae and, and Goldman Sachs. No, I was going to add that. That's right. If you want to, if you want to regulate Mr. Obama, don't limit it to Wall Street and Goldman Sachs and Chase and J.P. Morgan Chase. Regulate Barney Frank's fiefdoms. Regulate Fannie and Freddie and tax Fannie and Freddie. Then we'll believe you, Mr. Obama. Otherwise, we know it's just hogwash. I know I'm right. I'm always right. One eight hundred four four nine eight two five five. MichaelSavage dot com. Let's go to Rich. Rich, you're up on the Savage Nation topic. Please, what's on your mind? Yes, Dr. Savage. Uh, Mr. Brown owes his victory to you because of your criticizing the politicians and the government, and I keep it up, and I thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you very much. Yes, I am the godfather of government uh, uh, oversight. Yes, that's correct. I've been at this for 15 straight years, relentless. The Republicans did not know what conservatism was until I came along. Now, I'm not alone. I'll tell you, I thought about it. I said, who were my mentors? There's some people I don't even talk to anymore because I used to read them, and I'm going to name them when I come back. There's several individuals who taught me a lot about conservatism many, many years ago in their writings and in their speeches. And I don't even know them. I don't talk to them. But after them, there was, there's been nobody better than me in, in, in telling the politicians what we think of them.